Welcome to Artflix on CBA TV. Uh, this is Mutu Olawi, your host of this very essential, a very unique show. And uh, today, we are going back to India. And when we get to the other side of the studio, you get to understand who is this person I'm going to be meeting. I won't tell you his name, and I will tell you his personality until we get there. See you there. Welcome once again to the other side of the studio. As um, I've uh, promised you, today is going to be another story. We are going to another part of the world. Uh, we've been to that world before, but uh, we consider the generation closer to our own generation now, though the modern generation. We want to see the world farther than that. And now exploring from that time up to this side. That's why we are moving to the India. The India is highly populated. We have a lot of writers in that place. And we are meeting Dr. Janaid. Dr. Janel Singh Anand is um, a, pro a professional poet, a professional writer, a theorist, uh, a critic. Analyst to the core, Dr. Janelle has written more than 60 books, more than 60, I mean, of his own. And he has published a lot of poems in thousands of different anthologies across the globe. He was involved in different international social activities in uh, Nigeria, in Pakistan, in the United States, in the UK, in Canada, every part of the world. His knowledge of technology has really assisted him to uh, do a lot of things for humanity. Um, we're going to be discussing in detail. Uh, it's good to hear from us his mouth. Uh, so he's going to be discussing about this. When we go to the, other, the second part of this very important show, Dr. Janai, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm thankful for being invited by Art Flakes. Thank you. So, as someone who has been in the literary world, someone who studied literature, someone who studied English language in detail, how would you define the Indian literature? For me, Indian literature simply signifies uh, spirituality. Mm -hmm. in, one, in one line, I can say, uh, no doubt there are uh, in the current world, in contemporary scenario, there are so many currents that are taking place. We are facing globalization, we are facing, uh, you know, modernization, post-modernization, the breakup of family system, and uh, so many, you know, living which has been made very difficult by the economic forces. Muslim. Indians believe in spirituality and they believe that to all the ills of the world, all the menaces in the world, there is one panacea, one cure all, and that is to turn to spirituality. By spirituality, Dr. Mitu, I do not mean religion. A man who is not religious can be spiritual also. But we believe that uh, spirituality is the higher state of, uh, you know, religion. Religion is how you live. This is how you love. So spirituality means how you love the people, how you love the creation. This is spirituality. This is not you are wearing black clothes, you are wearing red clothes. This is religion. And we have to, you know, go beyond these limiting factors, okay, so that we are able to find solutions to the problems which are, you know, bedeviling humanity today. It's interesting to know that you've been in the literary world before and uh, that li the Indian literature is founded on spiritualism. Um, how would you compare the literary world of the Indians now uh, to the past? Uh, I feel that uh, 
literary activity today is in a ferment in a ferment there is a lot of uh, lot of people who are writing and uh, you know uh, mul- media multimedia facebook whatsapp these uh, uh, you know tools actually have come to the help of uh, people and they go on writing and uh, connectivity has helped people reach across all the regions i tell you 20 years back when we would publish one book it will be read by 20 people 30 people 50 people but now today i wrote a poem shadows yesterday it has been read by 147 people in just 2 hours so in this way there is lot of uh, you know dissemination of uh, so literature as an uh, the literary activity is also on the increase in india as compared to the past moreover in the past we had 4 5 10 10 uh, you know great writers writing whom people were reading but now we have 200 300 right hundreds of people are writing and they are read also they are read or they make themselves read some <laughs> they pers- they make efforts so that they are read also <laughs> so people are publishing their books uh it is a you know very good business also people are making money also out of this publishers are making good money because everybody wants to reach to others and there is no other way except to publish and then publicize so all these things are carrying on literary activity is on the rise i think uh, and this is a good sign for for the society so would you say that indian writers are appreciated by indians of by people around them or they are not of course uh, the indian writers who are able to reach the people are appreciated no doubt but you know all the writers are not writers i can say there are writers and writers you understand this there are writers and writers <laughs> so <laughs> you are right <laughs> those who are under writers right those who are under writers they write one book and then they get after the people in the literary academies and they try to get some sort of an award then there is all self importance going on so this is a, an activity which is going on moreover in uh, academies uh, uh, literary academies also which are run by the government they put their hand picked people with a Uh, with a certain vision so they do not promote literature of oh, okay in india which of the th- uh, genres of literature is the most popular among the three uh, genres of literatures that you have i mean the drama the prose and poetry which of these is the most popular in india india is known for its spirituality let me say and in the that realm of spirituality the great seers the great sages the great poets and prophets they have sung their verses in poetry so poetry is the dominant genre so why is drama less appreciated particularly by indians i told you uh, because i feel that uh, in the drama the things are not said with symbols in poetry you use symbols it means you are saying something indirectly you are not directly throwing stones at if you don't like something you don't throw stones in poetry you express your anger your anguish your angst with metaphors similes okay but even in fiction even in fiction things are not direct things are just suggested in novels things are suggested things are signified but in drama it is direct drama directly attacks the malaise wherever it is that is why governments are afraid of drama i believe this thing oh so government fear the uh, dramatists are maybe the playwrights uh, more than other um, writers uh, like poets and uh, novelists it's interesting to hear that 
it's not only, I, I believe it is a universal uh, uh, problem. Uh, governments would not want you to see what is really happening. And since people do not like to write, so, and since players, uh, or what we we'll call the, the plays are always staged, and it's difficult for them to, uh, they, they, they capture the emotion of people faster than uh, other parts. So uh, it's reasonable if we, they don't get funds from government. Uh, I was even initially thinking that it is because it's less spiritual. As I've said earlier that Indian literature is spiritual and um, most of the spiritual texts are in, um, in, uh, they're written poetically. So perhaps it might be as a result of that. Or what do you think? Actually, it is not uh, neglected by the masses. It is uh, liked by the masses more than poetry also because the thing is that it is not liked by the masters. The masters don't like this because it is direct. So uh, otherwise, uh, so far as uh, I told you, drama when it was presented in the form of two big serials, Ramayana and Mahabharat, it was very popular. People would stop their cars and buses and see the serial at a particular time, prime time. So drama is, you know, more natural to man. You know, we come from apes. You agree with me that um, writers are known as change makers anywhere they find themselves. What are Indian writers doing to take care of the masses or to protect the masses with their pen or their inks? The Indian society actually is under a change. Uh, it is under a transformation and uh, I told you when you try to control the imagination of the people, when you, try, when you try to tell the poets, write this, write that, when you tell the people, wear this, wear that, you know, too much of uh, indoctrination is not good. And at present, although there is a, a lot of liberty, a lot of freedom for the people to write, but still, uh, you know, there are instances where people who express themselves against the uh, ruling uh, deity, they are sometimes, you know, uh, trolled also. This trolling is going on in India, which is not a very good healthy sign. Because writers and media, they are the mirrors of a society. And we cannot bribe the mirrors. If you bribe the mirrors, what will happen? They will not show you your face. And if they don't show you your face, how will you be able to, you know, correct your features, correct yourself? So, these things are going on when you are controlling media, when you are trying to control education, when you are trying to control literature. These are not good. Certain freedom, actually in the areas of thought, there should be freedom, I believe in this. And people in India, uh, poets in India are writing, uh, there are, you know, one or two or three percent, I can say, some sort of uh, censorship type thing is there. Um, but mostly it is okay. And people are trying to express themselves if the government is doing something wrong. Ultimately, I tell you, Poetry is not about clouds. Poetry is not about clouds. Thank you so much. I think we have over-explored the world of um, the, the Indian writers. It has given us more information than before that we had from, uh, the, uh, from Sonnet Monday. Thank you so much for adding that. Viewers at home, uh, we'll be going for the break now. And when we come back from the break, we'll be looking at the world of this great writer. Uh, Dr. Janai Singh Anad. See you then.
hello out there. Tune in to CBA TV, the voice of East Africa and beyond. Uh, there's so many people around the world who are watching along with you. Welcome back, uh, viewers. Uh, we are on the show we call Athletes, and there we discuss about the world beyond. The world within and the world beyond. So today we are back in India with Dr. Janaya. And this time around, we'll be exploring his own world, technically or indirectly exploring the world of India and beyond, or the world of the masses, which is within him. Um, Dr. Janelle, would you like to tell us how you become a literary activist? Actually, uh, my training in literature started when I was uh, in ninth standard. In the school itself, we had a very good tradition, very good teachers. They made us read, uh, you know, Gorky and uh, other literary texts from Russia. Tolstoy, Gorky, and even uh, great writers from my own state, Punjab, we read in ninth standard. That was the beginning. After that, I started writing. And then I tell you, my first book came in 1985. And after that, uh, I went on writing. I was a lecturer in the Department of English. Then I be became principal also. But my you know, self-exploration, I would call it, did not stop. It went on to now I have uh, written some six or seven books in my mother tongue also. And total it is around 65 now. Recently, I can show you. This is my recent work which has come up. Latest, it is an autobiographical mm -hmm. novel, The Broken Narrative. This is, the, this is going around these days. And prior to this, let me share with my, your audience. Uh, these are the three uh, epics which I have written. This is the Satanic Empire. This was released last year. And prior to this, this Satanic Empire deals is a sequel to Dante's uh, Divine Comedy. Milton's Paradise Lost. It deals with that. And here is this uh, book, The Genterbury Tales. It, you know, reworks Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales. So these are the three books. Yes, the I three remember. Epics. And uh, mm -hmm. here is a book which uh, we were talking about biotext. This is uh, what I innovated. I innovated it with uh, an Iranian scholar, uh, Dr. Rohaya Farsi. She is Rohaya Farsi. She has written this book about my writing, in which she has compared my writing with the uh, T.S. Eliot's Wasteland and uh, with my book Bliss, which was translated into Iran, a Persian, has been uh, compared with uh, Khalil Gibran's The Prophet. It's interesting to know how your challenge in life has finally turned to what you become today. Um, that's a lesson for some of us who might be experiencing what we refer to as uh, complications at any level, whether at domestic level or the workplace. It is important to be consistent. Whether we like it or not, everything will finish one day. So here is the man who has now become a great icon for the world, particularly in literature. Uh, how did you become a social activist? Tell us about this part too. I have suffered a lot in my life. In my adolescent life, in my youth, I had to, uh, you know, I came from a poor family. My father, my mother, they had to work. And uh, I also had to, uh, you know, work in the daytime. And I went to an evening college. And uh, when I was uh, uh, working in an office, in a university, there also the conditions were not good. I always remembered Charles Dickens' uh, you know, novels uh, you know, applying on myself. I suffered a lot. So I always feel that uh, in society there are people who deserve your empathy. 
empathy they want uh, they need that you should go out to them work uh, help them in their uh, pursuits to rise in life so that was from the very beginning and whenever when i got a chance even when i was uh, in the uh, you know hot seat as principal i always helped the people from the lower strata if they did not have a, uh, if they didn't have a fee for college fees i would you know just condone them and ask them to pay as much as they can so in this way i helped many people many people from very poor families who were able to complete their degrees so this is a you know attitude an attitude a way of looking at life i suffered and whenever i see suffering my heart goes out to the people this is how it started then i came into contact with social activists working in other areas i got connected with them we organized functions i made monetary uh, you know uh, contributions also at some places so this is how uh, now my uh, uh, new uh, body galaxy international foundation has uh, has uh, an openly we believe that we are promoting art philosophy culture world peace and social activism social activism is on our agenda and we try to find people connect with them and uh, help them whatever we can so are you I love that. Are you trying to say that um, social activism is an aspect of spirituality? Exactly. I uh, one. Uh, what is spirituality? If I say the basic idea of spirituality, really in everything I put it in the beginning is that we want happiness, and happiness comes to you. only when you give something to somebody there is no other way in even in my book bliss i wrote it very candidly that if you want to get happiness there is only one way and this is to give happiness to somebody and social activism you know helps in the in increasing the store of happiness you have become happy by giving and the other person becomes happy by receiving your help which he needs so this way i think uh, we can store we can uh, exp- in- increase the store of happiness in our society there is no other way money wealth acquisitions possessions these are negative on the side of happiness they cannot create mm-hmm. happiness because happiness is created not with money it has no value it is in a valuable it is a state of mind you know with money we cannot we can go to some extent we can have some ac we can have some cars which help us but they are not happy they are means of comfort happiness is something else so what is happiness to you happiness i i believe that everything that we are doing we want if we want children if we want a business if we want you know houses if we want cars whatever we are doing is essentially for happiness although we carry a wrong conception of this idea we think with these things we will be happy no happiness is how you use your resources if you have money you have wealth it is not necessary that you will be happy you will be happy only when you use this money you take this money from the bank account and use it for some social purpose if if it is used for the people who need it that will add to your store of happiness not that money is lying in swiss accounts there are hundreds of people who have millions of dollars in the, here and there in other banks and other countries but these people are not happy actually they are destroying the happiness of people this is what is happening in uh, you know in politics this is happening in academics everywhere we have wrong choices wrong agenda 
wrong priorities which wean us away, push us away from happiness which comes to you simple funda if we do not cheat. All right, let's discuss about specifically about one of your work which makes you to enter the limelight of uh, the literary world. Uh, this is your theory, the Bartex. What is Bartex all about? Tell us about this. This theory says that uh, uh, when a person, when a text is written, okay, it has two aspects. One is the writer, the other is the reader. Both of them create that text at a moment, at some specific moment, some specific moment, and that moment cannot come again. If at a particular moment we write something, if we think that we can write the same thing next moment, this is not possible because it is just like taking a snapshot from a car. So you are going somewhere, car is running, you take your camera outside and take a snapshot. Now, if in the next moment you take the snapshot, will it be the same? No, it will be different. So this is how our mind is always moving. Moments are moving in our mind. It is controlled by time. It is controlled by our feelings. Also. This is how bio comes in. Bio means your personal life, your personality. What you are thinking, in what condition you are, what ideas you are visited by, and what memories are, you know, uh, what memories are revived when you see something. So everything goes into the creation of the text. At a moment, in the next moment, that text will be different. This is what I say. It is controlled by time. And this is a, uh, I call it cloud syndrome. Cloud syndrome, I, I can explain it this way. Suppose you see some stimuli, you look at something. What happens? In your mind, certain aspects of your mind get electrified. Not all of your mind, but certain memories are worked up. Okay? That there is a cloud is formed and then you know a trickle down starts. A trickle down starts and you start writing. Now, people often, what people often do is that uh, they say, this is your title and write a poem. This is what happens in general life is there is a title. People say, uh, write a poem on health, write a poem on girl child. This is the title written. I don't believe in this thing. Poetry comes to you uncontrolled. You cannot control it. You don't know which memories will be revived at a particular moment. And they will become a part of your writing. That is why people are different. We are different at one moment and next moment we are different from ourselves also. So there is no question one person, one moment being the same as the other. So when we have written it is in the last line that you will find the title of at that point. Because you don't know what you have written. After writing, you will go back it. Then you see, an idea came from there, an idea came from there. Now you have written the poem. At the end, you find this line. Then you give the title to it. So, actually it is uh, this way. And then the same thing happens with the reader. Now, when text passes on to the reader, it passes on to him at a particular moment. That moment is the magic moment. Because now, he will not read what you have written. He will recreate the whole scene. He has been stimulated. He read, he has been stimulated. Now he will recreate the text. In his own way, with his own memories, the same cloud syndrome forms into his own mind also. And at this moment, he will come up with another interpretation. Very next moment, the snapshot will be different. If this, so this is how bio and text, they come together. Time element, you know, take, uh, makes a great uh, impact on it. And my faith is that every writing is a political document. Own neutrality. I don't believe in this idea 
it is a political document it is a part of that particular book history and uh, it is controlled by time it's controlled by time this is how about text works this way it's interesting to understand that um we can as well say instead of saying interpretation of text on the part of the reader we can say recreation of text so both reader and writer are creators writers create and readers recreate not interpret is very interesting to understand this i think um, scholars who are really interested in um, exploring what you call the modern criticism or modern style of criticism. It's important to explore Baltext, the theory propounded by Dr. Janelle. Um, Dr. Janelle, uh, what are you doing with other writers to sustain literary activism, not only in India, because you are borderless, with your background and everything, what are you doing to support literary activism, not only social activism, um, beyond India? Actually, uh, when uh, the way poetry is created these days, there are uh, some poets who are well established and there are some poets who are coming up. There is a large army of uh, poets who are coming up, who are writing their poems, who are getting a little bit of awards here and there, but they keep writing. The basic idea is that uh, when we look behind, we must see that some people are standing there at, in the queue behind us. So that way, it is very essential that we create, we water, we create our own kind. Poets must help other poets grow, those who are coming behind them. Now, the question is how they are writing. There is a lot of criticism in our, you know, Facebook and other places that young writers are not uh, very good at English. They don't uh, use good English idiom and language problems are also there. And I tell you, if we go to Italy or some other countries, even uh, uh, countries like uh, Yugoslavia or something, English, they have problems in English sometimes, particularly young people. So I don't, I don't think that uh, we should close down on it. We should be liberal. If there are problems, we can talk them out rather than, you know, disparaging people. Suppose some young boy, young girl is writing poetry and uh, if there is some problem, if she writes wrong, there are problems, you find there is some verb is wrong. It is always good to tell in the messenger that this is the problem. Try to correct yourself. So if she takes it uh, properly, then uh, she will do it. Otherwise, let her go. We cannot do anything with this. The idea is that this process, this procession of poetry must carry on. We must be interactive. We must talk to the people, we must have communication, we must have dialogue and international conferences help us meet each other and once you attend any international conference, you are not the same after that. This happened to me when I went to Italy. Till today, I am in contact with uh, my friends. We were 20 who met there and then I went to Nigeria. It made a lot of difference in my life. And uh, twice, we, uh, last uh, year, we held World Poetry Conference in uh, Punjab. It made a lot of difference to the people who came there. They still remember it. And now the next uh, that we are doing, we hope that we will be able to create that international spirit of, uh, you know, give and take, of communication, and ultimately of love and harmony. This is what we believe in. So... I want us to go deeper into the, uh, the Galaxy International Foundation. What is it about and what are the activities that you do that has to do with combination of 
your literary activism and social activism? Three or four years back, I had established a philosophic poetry. So, after, uh, only last year, I established this Galaxy International uh, Foundation. The idea is to expand the network, the ex to expand the focus. Previously, philosophy was uh, connected only with only with philosophy, poetry, and but now this is uh, you know it it uh, takes care of art, it takes care of poetry, it takes care of philosophy, it takes care of uh, uh, world peace, it takes care of uh, social activism. Also. So we have tried to expand our you know work field. One thing is there. So. Uh, in uh, Dehradun, we have held Galaxy Jury Awards, in which we have awarded uh, and celebrated people who have really worked for society. There have been some awards like uh, Youth Leadership Award, Social Activism. So, some people have been awarded in that. That is one thing. Now, in our program, we are going to have international participation and uh, from different parts of India. Uh, our our part is to create an intellectual harmony. It's interesting to know that the world will be gathering there in India to explore their creative uh, world or to hear their creative uh, minds with other writers around the world. Uh, thank you so much, um, Dr. Janelle. Uh, but before you go, uh, do you have a specific message for our viewers at all? One, in, including those who are coming in the literary world, the, those who are re really interested, passionate young writers uh, across the globe. What's your message for our viewers? First of all, I would like to thank you for uh, connecting with the people the world around. And... Uh, I believe that by if you call it a message, then it is a message also. For the young writers, I would like to say, keep writing, don't stop. Keep writing, don't stop. And try to elevate, try to ameliorate, try to connect with the society. That is very important. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Janelle. This is where we're going to put the cutting of this session, uh, Atflix or CBA TV, the only TV station in East Africa where we explore the world beyond the world and the world within the world of individual and group across the globe. Um, today we've explored the Indian literature. When we meet next time, we'll enter another part of the globe. See you then. <laughs>